All right there YouTube welcome back to the channel and another video on Old Red our project 1983 Peterbilt 359 Those of you guys that have been following along know that in the last video Literally cut this truck in half took this rear section off of a 2010 Peterbilt 386 Made it up welded it back together updating everything in the rear end to 2010 and Making the truck about 40 inches longer in the process now the goal for today's video is to make this truck actually run and drive again, make it function as it should. Got our drive shaft mocked up in place here. Went to a different yoke on the rear end so that I didn't have to rework this drive shaft here. This was the original rear section. I added another drive shaft up underneath the truck that's the same length that we stretched the truck. I need to mount a carrier bearing back here off of this cross member which I've got the bracket for that fabricated up here. This is actually cut out of a scrap section of the old frame rail and I did have to kick it over to make this work here but we're going to get this bolted in then I need to drop the rear of this drive shaft back off take that yoke back off I've got a new seal to go on that rear end or change that seal, put that back together. Then, before I start sorting out this mess of air and electrical wires and everything here, I'm gonna need to throw the liner in here because I don't wanna try to be fumbling around trying to get that liner in around a bunch of air lines and stuff and make this thing a functional truck again. So anyway, let's get to it. So the drive shaft's all in, carrier bearings hung. I've got all my U-bolts are torqued, marked them with the paint marker so that I know that they're torqued. Went through the whole drive line, did all of them. This is a really good idea, especially on stuff like this where I mocked it all up loose so that I could set my drive line angles. Which, by the way, this is how I aired up the suspension to set my drive line angles. I just figured out which one went to the leveling valve here and rigged it up so I could hook it directly at the shop air so I could air the suspension up. Now that that's done, it's time to put the inner liners in place. Now I've painted the inside of the rails here with Pour 15, which is a very tough paint. I've also painted the liners with the same stuff. Try to help prevent rust from building up in between these rails. Now another thing I'm going to do is I've got some marine grade 
grease, which resists water washout. And I'm just gonna smear up the insides of these rails where these two are gonna sandwich together with this before I install the rails to further help prevent rust from forming in between the rails. Now I have these rails bent up to be an exact match to the insides of the rails on the truck so they are a very snug fit. I did test fit these before I painted them and now we've got the thickness of the paint on there as well. So this might take a little bit of persuasion to get this together here. These are quite heavy as well. Oh. Not going well. I think I underestimated. Whew. I think I underestimated how much harder having a little bit of grease on your hands would make that, but we got her in there. All right, so we've got the insert on this side bolted in with one single bolt. We're come back and mag drill all this when we get it all finished and know where everything's going to go and all that stuff. Should just be able to bolt our cross members in over all of our lines so I think this is all we really need to do before we can go ahead and just start plumbing this. Okay, so this should be ready to move now. Uh, got quite the mess in the shop. Definitely want to be able to move this thing out and straighten up a little bit and sweep up before I go any further. All the uh, air lines to do with the air brakes, I've got all new lines from front to back on some of the smaller stuff like the leveling valve, uh, power divider lockout, and that kind of stuff. I've got new air lines all the way from the front to in here, and then I just splice that into the air lines that are in the cutoff here, and that's all good. The truck will now pass the air brake leak down test. Despite the fact that one of my air wiper switches decided it wanted to start leaking, so I don't think we have any leaks at all to do with anything going back here. So I think that's pretty good. I still got to wire tail, tail lights and stuff like that, put cross members in, put the other sleeve in. 
My pusher axle did come in, so I can we're we'll take a look at that here in a minute. But I think first thing, uh, let's get everything kind of moved off the truck here and cleared out of the way. Go ahead and pull the truck outside and get the shop cleaned up a little bit, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, now it's just time to clean up the apparent bomb in the shop that went off and uh, pull it back in and we're continue on. I must say she's looking mighty good. All right, so the shop's halfway straightened up here. I'm gonna go ahead and get back to work on the truck. But before I go ahead and pull it back in, I wanna get the other cross member disassembled like this one is. You can see that there are actually three pieces. You got two end pieces and a center piece. We gotta take them apart because when we put our inserts in, it's gonna shorten up this center distance. So we need to redrill these slots here a little bit to make these cross members fit. So these things are held together by huck bolts, very similar to uh, what I've showed on the cab before. You can see that there, there's no bolt heads on those. It's a crimp down collar. And so we have to cut these off. this liner in the same way that we did the other one hopefully a little more gracefully this time I don't know how many times I dropped that thing <laughs> once it got greased up trying to get it in there but hopefully it goes a little more gracefully this time if I can get my glove on the right way there you go I don't know what these liners weigh, but they're not light. Made out of 5 6 teeth. So far, not going any more gracefully. Okay, that did go in better. Okay. Okay, so I've got my inner rail clamped in place, and I had already figured out that between this cross member and this cross member, I can equally space two more cross members in here and have one of them land right where our frames are welded together, and then the other one will land right on this mark here making this bolt hole here the top corner which corresponds to this one here so we're going to go ahead and drill that also this new pusher axle i got here 
the brackets are blank so we don't have to worry too much about where the bolt holes are going to be because we can just drill these to match the frame. Alright, so we've now got the mag drill set up on the first hole here. All right, so my camera battery ended up going dead yesterday and I didn't quite get this finished up anyway, but we do have everything drilled in on that side. We've got this cross member in. I've got a lot of what I need to drill over here marked out. We got two more bolt holes to drill there and the bolt holes for this cross member here. And then there will be four more bolt holes in here that I'll have to drill from the inside because the tank's in the way and I can't get the mag drill in there. Now back when I installed the pusher axle on my Mack truck, I hand drilled all the holes. And I'll tell you that mag drill is a huge, huge time saver. I think I burned up about $100 worth in drill bits and two or three drills hand drilling all the holes for the, the pusher axle. And I'm drilling a lot more holes in this for this project than I did in that one. With the mag drill, it takes longer to lay out and mark all of your bolt hole locations than it does to actually drill them. The bits that I'm using are these annular cutters. They're almost kind of like a hole saw and uh, they cut very well. You can tell by all the drill shavings on the floor, it almost looks like something that'd come out of a machine shop. But this is going quite well and uh, let's get back after it here and get this wrapped up. Basically what you do is you've got this little center pin here. You just line that up on your center punch, just like so. You turn your magnet on here and then it's stuck on there. Okay, so I just kind of royally screwed the pooch here. I laid out these six bolt holes off of an existing hole that was right here. I assumed that that would be square with the existing hole that was on that side. However, it's not. I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but this cross member is sitting like this. So I grabbed my tape measure start looking at it and it's not two inches off where I can just slide it over to the next set of bolt holes and have two blank bolts there and drill two more holes no it's one inch off so these six bolt holes are one inch out of square from that set of bolt holes however everything is set up divisible by two. So I don't know why there was one bolt hole here that was one inch out from everything else, unless maybe that was something that somebody drilled themselves, or I don't know what the deal was there, but there's no way to line this up true 
By the time you drill 5 8 hole, move it over one inch, there's going to be no meat in between. There's going to be no way I can put a bolt through these six holes. So, looks like I get to weld up six holes and drill them again. Yay! Well, there's six bolt holes welded up. Just got to grind them down smooth, re-drill them, and we're right back where we started. Alright, so that's fixed now. I'll have to pull that cross member back out so I can touch up the paint on the inside. But I think that's pretty much it for the chassis work here on the frame stretch. Still got to start installing the pusher axle on here and do all that stuff. I still got to wire tail lights and yada yada. But anyway guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe down below. Have a great day.